Hey, 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 Nigerian XJW Speaks here. How are you doing? Welcome. If it's your first time here, my name's Trust. Um, I am a former Jehovah's Witness from Nigeria. And I, I decided to create this space and share on here, share on here the um, some of the reasons why I left and sort of reinforcing why that was the right thing to do. But more importantly, share my journey of moving forward creating a life after leaving the faith. This is the second time I'm recording this because <laughs> the first one I was making quite pissed actually. I was nearly up to the end and then I was going to pause it and then I stopped it. So here we go. So I have to do it all over again. Um, anyway, hope you're doing well. Um, if you like what you see, what I say, give the video a like, give it a thumbs up. Apparently that helps more people see it, which is which is what we want. So more people who are waking up, who are leaving, they they, they hear more voices um, validating what they're feeling, the choices they're making. They're not crazy. You know, there's a lot of people out here who are waking up and leaving. So share it with them. Give it a thumbs up. Okay. What I wanted to talk about today um, is sort of some musings I've been having on the issue of I'm going to call it what it is, alcoholism within the witness faith. Now, if you don't think it's a problem, I want to hear differing opinions, but I think there's a problem. And I'll tell you why I think my theory for why that is the case. So if you have never been a witness, you've not had anything to do with them and you've just stumbled on this. Well done you. Aren't you a lucky thing? Um, oh, what to what to no we don't say lucky when you're a witness you don't say lucky oh remind me what it is in the comment i'm going i'm drawing a blank on that but you're not supposed to be saying that you're lucky um if you never had anything to do with them um there are a group that live under quite high control and a lot of prohibitions uh, it's almost as if everything that's that's fun anything that's going to you know, bring people together make you ha feel feel loved and special so things like your birthdays um even christmas easter new year's any of those things they can't do it and um, they can't have sex before marriage they can't masturbate they can't um that everything is tightly controlled so i think i think hear me out and if you have a different opinion i want to hear it Alcohol is one of the few things that they're allowed to partake in. Now, they're not advised to get drunk. Actually, that is frowned upon. You could get in trouble for that. But they're allowed to drink. So I think when you have a group of people that's heavily repressed and they get this one outlet, they're going to take it. They're going to take it and they're going to run with it. And this is what I've found in my personal life growing up and also some of the information that's come out you know since i've left in terms of you know all the way to the top governing governing body members and um, the governing body this is the um a group of eight men that run the show so right from the top there up to the bottom this is what seems to be the case now starting with sort of the home run the home ground um, growing up in Nigeria, um, I can't even tell you when I had my first drink. I was quite young, um, must have been maybe nine, ten, and I wasn't sneaking it or stealing it. I was giving it by my dad. Um, it was given as something. It's medicinal, so it's sort of this spirit that um, clear spirit that we have. Um, herbs put into it for a few days and it absorbs sort of whatever color and whatnot is coming out from from the leaves and then would come line up in the morning me and my brother and sister and have our morning shots and that was the start of that now i personally would not do that to my child who is seven but as far as things go i'm not traumatized by it um Growing up, you start building up a tolerance and then you're taking in more and more and more. Um, I don't think that's great for the young mind. Um, not just for the kids, 
Now, I, I'm not going to share about people who um, haven't given permission to be shared, but what I will say, within my own household growing up, there were functioning alcoholics. So people who could just about get by, but you can tell there's a drinking problem. You can see it physically that there is a problem. And I just think it's people being repressed, trying to find an outlet or trying to escape what's happening inside their heads, which was the case with me some time ago, where during my university years, you know, we all know university students, they can't drink a lot. But usually it's like a social thing. They go out with their friends, they have a drink, it's a laugh and they talk about it. But when you're locking the door and drinking by yourself to forget, that's a completely different thing. They're both damaging, but you know, that's, that's a problem that needs to be fixed. And that's uh, where I found myself for some time, to be honest, you know, since we're saying the truth here if you if you've watched any of my videos you know that I am I'm all about honesty transparency um, have enough hypocrisy <laughs> growing up as a witness to last a lifetime so what you see is what you get I say it as it is um personally for me what sort of broke the cycle sort of like snapped me jolted me into place was getting pregnant actually and having to go a whole year without drinking well not quite a whole year is it nine months whatever well from from the point I found out and that was I was really grateful for that because that that sort of stopped that pattern that pattern that had been going on for 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 over a decade at that point sort of stopping it in its tracks and okay you you're gonna have to confront what's going on in here you can't use that to escape from it anymore you actually are going to have to deal with it and um, you know, looking back fantastic because that's where a lot of growth sort of came from but what about people who don't get a chance to do stuff like that um you know, and this goes all the way right to the top this goes all the way right to the top this is a sort of subtle subtle impact like it's it's underground, but it can be quite damaging. You don't need to do much research very far to see what is the impact of alcoholism on pe on people. You know, to the liver, to overall health, to lifespan. You know, this is this is real, real impact here. And I think when you have a group of people that are so inhibited, there's no outlet. And there's this one thing they can do that can create that mind altering state. They're going to take it. They're going to run with it. Uh, there is a channel here on YouTube. I don't remember what it's called now, but it's a guy called Jordan. He was a better light. So a better light, if you don't know, this is someone who has volunteered themselves to, to work for the organization completely. So they go and live in the Bethel building. So these are like... Um, complexes that they have in countries where they you know do a lot of the printing work and whatever else they're doing there so these are the really committed witnesses they are just they are a tier above the the rank and file so jordan was was there and when he was making his video which i'll try and link if i can find it that even right there in bethel the the, the excessive drinking that goes on in there because what else are you going to do to give yourself a bit of fun? I mean, if you've heard of Pillowgate, <laughs> that's another crazy video. Uh, a series of video that they, they, they recorded as, I guess, induction for people that were coming into Bethel. And they had all these rules about what kind of trousers you can wear, how to sleep with your pillow at night to, to not commit a sin, uh, what you can do, what you can't do. No wonder people need an outlet to let off some steam and not be in their heads so much. Right all the way to the top, Anthony Morris, one of the governing bodies, the governing body, that's the group of eight men who run the show. Um, a video came out of him earlier this year where on a Sunday he sneaked out 
driving these long distances to this shop where he's buying bottles and bottles of whiskey um and someone was having a conversation with him and he really seemed to know his stuff like knowing what one to recommend now i'm not saying he was drinking it all by himself but we have seen cases of him delivering talks where he has sounded less than completely sober you know so putting together sort of my own experience that I saw growing up um, other witnesses that I know, I think there's a problem. There's a problem with people who don't have any other outlet, any other thing that they can do without being disciplined, without being threatened to, to, to lose their family and friends that this is this one thing and they build up a high tolerance for it they can take a lot of it and still you know look and act relatively functional and sober and they're taking it and it's a real shame it's a real shame what the impact of that would be on sort of lifespan and what's happening in there so that's my theory what do you guys think did you see a similar thing if you'd grown up as a witness does that resonate at all am i completely off <laughs> you, you your congregations they were all fantastic everything was great and it was just me i want to hear what you guys think um i'm so so grateful to so glad i'm out of that so glad i'm out of that where i don't have to try and drown out what's going on it i can actually address it and look at it and and be free to explore things and investigate things because i'm not feeling judged i'm not scared of what's that going to think what's that person going to think because what is what is the point of life if you don't explore it if you don't see where it's taking you anyway those are my thoughts um like i said give the video a like a thumbs up if you like it subscribe to the channel there's a lot of you that are watching and not subscribing i don't know why <laughs> um you need to subscribe so you know when i put new videos out i am aiming i think we've been successful so, so far to get a video out every week either on a tuesday or wednesdays and just recently we started um monthly live streams as well so i did the first monthly one last week sunday and um, it was just me myself and i <laughs> until uh, we had someone join right at the end but it was it was it was good and i've been reading your comments uh, from that they've been really great the other live we did before that that was for the memorial that was so much fun we had a few people on and we had a good chat so we're gonna be doing that every month um that the fourth sunday or the last sunday of the month i'm all i'm always gonna do a scheduled premiere thing so that you know when it's coming up ahead of time cool 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 so i, I really want to hear did you guys see there was a problem with alcohol um if you have any crazy stories let's let's have a laugh we could we could do with a laugh these days honestly <laughs> with everything that's going on or if everything was just fine and dandy where you are let me know as well okay all right i will talk to you on the next one have a good rest of the week bye